right. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Hello and welcome again to uh, Photography Talk with three Platt, Pratt grads. That's Pratt Institute of Brooklyn, New York. I'm Greg Claycourt. These are my buds, Ken Nelson and Mark Skinner. We both graduated. For, we all graduated from, uh, I guess Mark didn't have to raise his hand. If it wasn't him and it wasn't Kenny, that's Mark. Okay, so uh, we... Uh, <laughs> We all graduated. We suffered through Pratt Institute's photography, fine art photography program, went through foundation and uh, suffered through uh, sculpture when we were two-dimensional artists. That was probably my uh, most harrowing experience next to statistics, but that's another story. Um, and uh, we survived it, graduated. And uh, today we've been, we've been shooting uh, for since then, you know, more 30 plus years. So we got almost like a hundred years experience, but uh, we also have the, uh, the classical fine art approach to photography. So that, that, uh, that has been an influence on our work and uh, the photographers we studied plus uh, just photography we've, we've met since then have, uh, you know, influenced our lives and we love photography still. And we, we talk about it. Uh, please, you know, join us. Uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and uh, hit click the bell so you can uh, get a notification when we post a new one. Ken, Mr. Nelson, he's our um, he is our um, technical director. So uh, please uh, send us uh, information or uh, you know comments and uh, suggestions and uh, or topics if there's something that you want to hear. We will be going live soon, so keep an eye out for that um, today. We're going to be talking about portraiture, but in a different light. Studio versus street portraiture, and I want you, you guys, to be able to defend it. Well, I mean, not that far, but I like portraiture. Portraiture is, uh, you know, kind of it's personal. You get to interact with the uh, subject, and. Um, uh, I do like studio portraiture, but um, sometimes I like to take the structure of studio portraiture out to the street. You know, I, I uh, one of my love hate um, uh, imagery of portraiture is uh, Richard Avedon's uh, In the American West. Um, unfortunately, there were no black people in it. So I was like, maybe there's no black people that live in the West, but I now that I live in the West, there are black people out here. So, um, uh, I liked that he just put a, you know, put a white backdrop up and got people to step in and pop, 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 and got these beautiful high resolution images of, um, of uh, people that, um, you know, they really could have been shot anywhere, you know, environmental portraits, like uh, the gentleman that does the, uh, what is that guy's name, Ken, does the uh, uh, people of New York, he sh sh shot the uh, houseless people or people on the streets. Ooh, I forget his name. Yeah. I don't remember his last name. Ooh, please forgive me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah I, I got well, humans in New York. I, I know the. I know the, the group. It's but Robert. Uh, bu, 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 bu. I forgot his name. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll think of it by the end of the show. But um, but portraiture is is uh, it it can uh, do a lot. Like for me, like I, you know, if you've seen any of the other episodes, I, I don't like to put uh, titles on uh, my photographs to allow the viewer to see what they see in the image. And uh, portraiture kind of does that. You can, there really isn't much you can say about a portrait. Ooh, I am completely wrong, sorry, it's Brandon Stanton. I don't know why Brandon I said it. Oh, Brandon there he is. Yeah, so sorry. P uh, Humans of New York, it's a great series of photographs. Um, and uh, there's just something about just the sheer, it forces you to look at the lighting, it forces you to look at the, at the individual. And uh, it just kind of, grabs you and doesn't let you go, you know, like that. So <laughs> portraits or paintings where you, the eyes are looking at you no matter where in the room you go, that kind of a uh, feeling. So, all right, let's get started. Uh, one of my first images up is uh, uh, this one from the streets of New York, a street performer. And um, I think he was between sets and I mean, culturally and Tonality wise, there was just something about, you know, this black guy painted gold in the middle of Manhattan, you know, and it just, it kind of just gripped me the way, um, it, it said a lot of things on a lot of different levels, you know, and 
it could have it could have been i really wish that i had had set up like a white backdrop just to get all of the um you know make all the uh, the rest of the new york city scene vanish but um uh i guess you could call this would you guys consider this like an environmental portrait or what a little bit. I, you know, I, I've, I've seen similar street performers where they actually have a stand that they've made for themselves. Yeah. Well, so I don't know if this guy has done that. So. Right. Uh, yeah, he did. Well, he, he, has, he, has, he did. Yeah, I would have liked to see him in his workspace more than just on the corner. I, I think yeah. it is interesting, though, that he's a guy who is uh, completely seemingly made of gold who is street performing you know mm -hmm. uh you know the irony of that from our perspective is you know grown folks who you know try to earn is uh is a difficult you know it's it's challenging in that way you know challenges our sensibility about uh you know the justice of someone who is street performing but being made of gold hmm or painted gold. Well, you got anything, Ken? Because I wanted to say something else about that. No, go ahead. Okay. Well, what, what, what I, I mean, the, if I had, if I had the white, the, what would have made it uh, a better portrait for me? If it was if I had the full white background and I got him with all of his, as his accoutrement, you know, the, all of his, you know, the, if he had a stand or if he had a prop or something, you know. If he had like a bucket with money, you know, hanging out of it or something like that, uh, on a white background. I didn't want. I wanted. I wanted to get in and you know see the whites of this guy's eyes. You know, I wanted to see his features that come through despite the paint. I wanted all of that, and you know, and um, I, I wanted to make it a portrait of this guy. And I think I, uh, I think I was pleased with what I got. Okay, you go on to the next one. Um, this is a model, a young aspiring model here in uh, California, and um, we did a street. We had we did some studio, but uh, I kind of like the uh, the street shots um, a little better, only because they uh, the lighting um, is is kind of arbitrary, and you really have to really really work with the lighting that you're given. You know, there it was a bright sunny day for most of most of the day but thank god when we got to this location this bank of clouds rolled in and the light got really soft um but for this one i did uh i did use a uh, portable strobe and i popped some light into a reflector to to kind of match the um the light the ambient light and mm -hmm. uh you know i i <laughs> like the lay previous episode filling the frame you know i wanted I wanted it to be, you know, we found this really colorful um, graffitied wall and, you know, capture on that and uh, generated, created this image with, uh, as uh, is my homage to like a street portraiture. So that's what I got for that. You guys got anything or shall I move on? No, I'm, 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 I have nothing. Oh, yeah. All right. Moving right along, next image. I have this one is um, this young lady, this woman. Um, I'm not exact. I almost got into three different accidents trying to get <laughs> out of my car. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm driving one way. I you know look over and I'm like ah, and then I'm like driving like this, with, <laughs> and I'm like wait, great. You're going forward up. So yeah, so I figured that one out. And then I'm trying to make a U-turn and try to capture catch her before she disappeared, because people in Los Angeles will disappear. If they see you look at them, you turn the corner and they're gone. And uh I got to turn around, I zoomed back up the block, I found a parking spot, and she was just and I talked to her and she was special. So I think she had some issues, but I think we all do. I definitely do. And uh, and I spoke with her, and I was like, "Why, why, why did you, you know, uh, paint? Are you an artist? Are you making a statement?" And she said she was actually doing an homage to to Africa and African art. And I remember a, a couple of sculptures of masks 
that had similar um, motifs that she is uh, that she's captured here. But um, it was just stunning in where it was. And I did want to shoot her. There was a brick wall right next to her, but but there was uh, also a, uh, a construction site that was that had this that green background. It's green, you know, that weird material they put up so that you can't see what they're doing. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I asked her if she could just step in front of that for me. And she did. She was obliging. You know, I think I even sent her, of course I did, I sent her a copy of the of the better better images and uh just that lime green did matched everything she was wearing and even in black and white but i, I couldn't I, I printed in it or i or i produced one in black and white and it is a completely different image because the i mean the impact of it but i just enjoy all the color and the and her eyes she was just like laser focused right on me and i i uh I, I, I just I just can't stop looking at this image. It's it's a little disturbing. It's a little calming. It's 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 so many things for me. Um, but uh, when I think of street portraiture, I think there's there's uh, there's nothing like it. You know, you could say you know I mean oh one of the uh, um, one of the fun things to do is to uh, light something so that it does look like it's shot indoors or shot shot in a studio setting. And, um, you know, as far as defending street versus uh, um, studio, indoor studio, um, I I don't see, you know, uh, either one of them, you know, uh, uh, being necessarily defensible. I I think a a good portrait is where you find it. You know, sure, you you can create the lighting in a studio, control the lighting, and et cetera, et cetera. but I, I said that before, and I'll say it again. It's content. It's not so much the light you're using. It's what you're capturing. And um, I think this image captured a lot for me. Uh, it speaks a lot to me to this day. And uh, I think it's kind of timeless. You know, it could have been shot yesterday. It could have shot, been shot, you know, back in the 60s. You know, it's just, it, 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 it spins my wheels. That That's... Uh, that's what I've got for I and I like you know being the photo uh, having a photojournalistic uh, flair and and uh, enjoyment of that field um, as a photojournalist I, I like being able to um, capture images outdoors you know and uh, portraiture in particular because people man they they just never 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 get old for me all right that's all I got. I think that's the last one. Did I have more pictures? No, it's just just those. There was just those, just those three. Okay, um, I did have some other studio shots, but I'm not going to do them in this in this uh, in this um, in this episode. So go ahead. Who's next? Okay. Who's next when time? when were you, when did you photograph this? Oh my gosh, I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Um, I could <laughs> I could find the file and give you the exact date. No, I think just I, around I shot about this. Oh my gosh! Um, I think the second time I was in LA, maybe around. Uh, Just give a what year? Okay, ball ballpark about, about about maybe twenty twelve. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's 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 uh yeah, it's got some time on it. That 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 was uh, I'd say about twenty twelve. Good lord, that's like ten years old. Wow, thanks, Ken. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a, no. I just wanted to get an idea because, you know, when we look at photographs, and yeah. as a photographer, the amount of time that you'd like a person to spend with your photograph is how much time, uh, so they get to understand, or as best as they can, what your motivations are to photograph what you photographed, and what you hope. The person to get from it as they view it. So, and the reason why I'm looking at this is because I'm saying I'm I'm looking at multiple levels here, and I'm looking at levels of color, and I'm looking at levels of humanity, and and I'm trying to come to terms with how do I make sense of this and what it means to me, mm. and how closely relevant it is to you, and if I'm in the ballpark in what you hoped I would get from it as a viewer watching it. Okay. And and so 
And again, I, I can't escape the notion as coming at it from a phot photographer's point of view. So I'm trying to come out of that, right? So I so I get to just see it as a person, not as a photographer. And so yeah. as a person, I look at this and I just see the color. Okay. Because it's so strong. And there and I'm trying to get to the eyes, but I can't because I'm mm. so overwhelmed by the color. Okay. You know? And then the next thing that, as me is visually, for a person who's visual, I tend to pay attention to the cracks in the forehead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yes, you know, and then sure. I and I start to think about age. You know. Mm -hmm. and, and so you know, those are just things. And then and then and that brings the question for me. It's like, how much time am I going to spend with this in this mm -hmm. age of scrolling past Instagram and doing all that stuff like that? Right. What do you okay. what do you what do you have to say about I, that? I think I, I think I think that oh go ahead Greg you can respond to that. No no go ahead Mark go ahead. Well I mean if I was going to answer go ahead. Um, go ahead Mark I'll, I'll answer I'll remember what what Ken. No I, go I was going I was going to say that uh, you know uh, Ken has a really good point about, about sticking to this image uh, a little long. I feel that because she has selected such a specific palette for you. I would love to take a photograph of this person as they are in a, with a black and white monochrome camera and a slightly orange filter okay. and, and just see how she renders in black and white. Because I get the feeling that we'll get an entirely different feeling, not so much exotic, but much more gothic. You know, and we'll get, you know, all that, all that cyan will get black, all the blue will get uh, really black, the, the, the uh, yellowish orange areas will get white, right. whiter, uh -huh. we'll have uh -huh. an alabaster face, and we get a sensibility of this because there's, you know, the, the kind of between the sort of the oranges and the, and the, and the cyans, and then the, there's the green and the yellows, uh -huh. but with the filter, in a black and white uh, film, this would be a completely different image. Even the background would get yeah. to a medium gray. Yeah. And, and I think it would be an interesting uh, uh, thing to study. see, mm. to study, to, to take, take a photograph of this individual as they are uh, with a true black and white media and, mm. and also uh, with the color of media that we most of us have at this point in history. So it's mm. a Interesting. Um, because for me, just like for Ken, you, you know, he was saying the, the 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 cracks in her forehead were the part that really were intriguing. I have to confess that rather than the eyes, I know you you thought the eyes were the most engaging aspect of this figure. I felt that the uh the, the forehead really because uh the forehead is so counter uh what we are expecting as viewers for anyone's face that mm. It's uh, uh, very engaging for me as a um, as a viewer who is also a photographer. Yeah, yeah. And I usually um, and I usually don't talk about people's features, but in this case, since he has so much makeup on, and you know, it's it's a you know, it's a it, I think it's fair to, to address that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that was uh, one of the reasons why I. You know, risk life and limb to to catch up, catch up to her to capture this image. Um, there was there was there was something special about her when I saw it. Yeah, to 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 uh, check in with uh, Ken's uh, comment. Most definitely, the uh, the cracks in the paint on her, you know, and how it caked up in her hair for sure. Um, but then when when I had asked her why, and she said, uh, "Okay, Benin, that's what it is. It reminds me of a there's a classic." Uh, mask from Benin um, that was reminiscent or what I what was reminiscent for me of this image and um, yeah I mean it, it brought out a whole lot of cultural uh, issues you know slave trade you know all the throwback to you know you know in the middle of Los Angeles and in, in you know modern times she was talking about uh, it's an homage to Africa and to Africans I'm like Wow, where did that come? I don't know too many Africans that paint themselves, you know, like this, but I don't have to. You know, she was making a statement artistically and culturally, and uh, you can't, you know, talk about that without, you know, the slave trade and the, the hundreds of years. And I thought the um, the cracking of the paint 
played into you know that time uh, time factor that uh, you can't you can't get away from. I mean, if you're going to throw in there the idea of you know uh, an homage to to Africa, you know, for me in my head, that's what that's what I was thinking when when I captured this and I spoke with her and I got her feedback from this, and um, I I I didn't feel. I mean, she had a whole you know head to toe thing going on. And uh, I did shoot head to toe, but for me, this right in there, that's that's where the money was. And uh, it just, oh my gosh, the way she painted her lips, the chin, the, you know, the blending of the tones, it, it almost looks, she almost looks like, um, like she is, uh, she was bronze and she's bronze and she's on her way to developing her patina, you know, and I, I, I really, really, really wanted to, to get that to come through. Um, when I, uh, when I saw the black and white, you know, cause I did a black and white, um, uh, version of this, like you said, you, you, you hit it right on the head. It, it was a completely different image. Um, I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot, but I also, thought the colors were were just screaming you know um you know because you know africans we do like our colors <laughs> colorful dress and i'm part caribbean so yeah we like our you know you know what i'm talking about mark <laughs> yeah we like we're colorful we're colorful okay. people poets and artists and um and i i really really wanted that that to come through and uh and I want to show it in color because it, it really, really, she was, she was speaking a lot to me. So that's, uh, that's what I have with that. Hmm. Portraiture. <laughs> Anything else? If nothing else, let's move right along. Who's next? Mr. Nelson? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got me. Oh, yeah, Nathan. I got you. Uh, what do you mean? I got you? Hmm? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure where to begin. Um, I guess I'm going to begin, uh, I guess, with, um, I guess, drama? Drama. Nothing like drama. Yeah, nothing like drama, right? So, I mean, I, I'm a street photographer, and I photograph out in the street. And so, usually, what we're looking for in the street is drama, and uh, personality-wise. And so, you know, uh, one day we're out and so one day I'm out and photographing for, at a festival. I won't say which festival it is, but person shows up in this kind of dress and you're like, OK, I'm intrigued, you know, and, you know, immediately it's like I got to photograph it and fo photograph the person. And I'm like, OK, you start to think, OK, we're outside. I have no handheld light so we're using the sunlight as usual and so you start to say okay how do i take advantage of the light that i have well okay make sure that your subject is facing at least part way toward the light source <laughs> so you know you sort of like okay turn your subject to the light source please so uh as much as you can because i don't like to intrude on people i don't like to impose them but i do want to get the photograph and so you know in in, in as fast as maybe 20 seconds i said can i get the photograph Aim this way, turn the camera, pop, done. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay. You know? uh, so that that's sort of what it's about, and uh, not much else to say about it. Uh, now that I see it, I think if I had to do something differently, I would just do the, aim the slightly different, but with the time that I had and the pressure I felt to just take the shot and get away with it, uh, I would have done something slightly different, but nonetheless, I captured it. It's in focus. And that's, to me, that's the most important part. <laughs> well, well, here's, well, here's the question I have for you. When you took this photo, because the fact that the head headdress does blend into the foliage in the back uh, mm -hmm. and the dress blends into the foliage that's uh, you know below the the tree, the, 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 the bushes and, and, and shrubbery that's there, that's that's really wonderful and then the the fact that you know face and shoulders are very smooth uh so they stand out right obviously mm -hmm. the question i have for you was was it intentional for the headdress to blend into the background when you initially photographed that or was that something that that you noticed when you saw the negative or the 
or the image or uh, whatever it was that you used to, to create this? You know, I think sometimes things just come into alignment. Mm, and just grab and it where you can grab it. The most important part was, the most important part for me was that the face had to be lit. Right? And that was sort of the most important part. So uh, it, the background is almost inconsequential in a way, but I would not say that it was not, like we talked about before, it's almost automatic to the point where I don't even think about what it is I'm doing. I just do it, you know? And so somewhere along the line, I'm figuring out these things without even actually thinking about them, which is, I know that I'm photographing in black and white. I'm using black and white film, so I know what tonalities are going to be like, right? And so I'm saying, okay, yeah, I know what this looks like. So, yeah, with the sun at this angle and the trees in the background, it's possible. I can't say I remember what I was thinking about when I photographed this, but it's not far-fetched for me to think about those things while I'm actually taking the photographs. Mm. Because, you know, you're, 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 you're looking through the viewfinder and you're saying, okay, okay, and then you start to see the moment fade because it's taking maybe a little bit too long, so you just take the shot, mm. you know, before the uh, moment goes away. I got a question for you. Yeah. Just a quick one. Would color have separated that headpiece from the trees at all, or they were complementary anyway? I don't remember the colors. Uh, this okay. photograph was taken in 2008. Oh, good Lord. Okay. <laughs> so I just don't remember. <laughs> okay, no worries, no worries. I mean, it, it, even though it's a black and white photograph, uh, because the figure is sort of blended partially into the background, it, it uh, the, the overall image reminds me of the type of uh, styling that uh, Kehinde Wiley does with some of his portraiture. So, um, it, you know, it has a similar feel in that the, the background, you know, sometimes overlaps with the, with the figure in the foreground, mm. you know, and I was thinking particularly of the Obama uh, portrait. Wow. The, okay. He's, he's in the foliage, but the foliage is also enveloping him in a little bit, in a little bit of a small way. And so when I, when I, when I, I look at this photo because it's monochromatic uh the background and the uh figure overlap in similar ways uh to that portrait mm. it's because i like all the patterns and colors and textures and well not colors yeah but the patterns There's... the implied colors you know this is yeah. a very colorful image <laughs> Yeah. Even without color being there yeah that, that's out there that's kind of you know, cool. the only thing that bothers me is that little that little figure in the lower right, I find a little troublesome. Okay. That's okay. a leg. Yeah, just just a little. Okay, cool. Interesting. Interesting. It takes me a, it takes me a while to get there. You know uh, what I mean? <laughs> you know, I, I look at the entire image and then I go, oh wait, there's a there's a face. Yeah. All right. On to the next one. And this is weird because I'm doing this off the cuff because I'm just I was last actually looking at some of the images. So, you know, and then you know, ah. sometimes you just <laughs> You know. I always love this image. You do? <laughs> yes. Okay. That this is the uh, uh Central Park Skate, right? Yeah. This okay. is uh yeah. Again, this is uh one again, another image from 2008. And what's interesting is that I still consider this a portrait even though I I I tend to and as I was thinking about this today I said portrait versus street. Is there really a difference? And so when I was considering a portrait when someone is standing still, engaging with the photo photographer, looking at camera, giving something. Um, not necessarily someone in motion who's passing by and doing something that I happen to catch that looks like a portrait. <laughs> and so this person was on skates, skating by me and making a, you know, just doing something. And He's mugging for you. <laughs> it's mugging. But it wasn't to the point where they were standing still posing. They were just moving by. And this just yeah. happens to be the shot that I took like that. So, but I was like, wow, okay, cool. And the use of flash fill to do that and the drama that the flash fill creates mm -hmm. with the image. Yeah. Right? And you, whether you're using, you know, uh, how you're using the flash fill to either uh, just add a little bit of punch or just overtake the whole image so that the background and you use the high shutter speed so your background goes back down dark 
to increase the drama. Absolutely. So, yeah. so I just thought that was interesting as I'm looking at looking through these. You know, and I brought about four, but I'm not going to go through them. But I just thought this was interesting as well. Um, again, street portraits. Um, you know, um, mermaid, it's parade, a mermaid, mermaid parade. Mermaid yeah, parade. Mermaid uh, Very dramatic. Oh, yeah. people, you know, uh, very interesting. But again, people have to sort of be interesting in order for you to photograph them. And again, these are all without flash fill. This is just straight, straight. shots for the sun. Man. You know? And, I, I love this series too, Ken. These are these the, are amazing. One of the interesting things about these is that you know, um, yeah, I, I mean, this is Coney Island House, uh, straight off the sun. This is actually a setting sun. Actually, this is when the sun is low in the horizon, and that's all they're lit by. And you can see my shadow. Uh, that's my mm. shadow right there. Um, and I, I just go and ruin it. I, I like that. I like that shadow. I thought it was naturally <laughs> well, very. Yeah, I, 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 it was. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It's fine. Yeah. What, I, what I would say is that uh, yeah. I, I think, you know, we, there's a wonderful tonality that you're getting from just using the setting sun as your main, as your key light. Uh -huh. and, as yeah. the only light. <laughs> yeah. Well, with reflective, you know, with, of course, the sun scatters, but still, for the most part, it's great. That was, that was, uh, oh, I, I am so good. Who did that uh, portrait? Um, Rembrandt, Vermeer, the girl with the pearl earring. She's just looking over her shoulder. Kind of. Huh? Sorry. It's uh, Johann Vermeer. It is Vermeer. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as far as, uh, um, you know, uh, unexpected portraiture, you know, um, that was kind of environmental, but just, just the way you capture, you know, darks and lights and the figure in, you know, darks and lights, you know, it, it really works for me. I, I, uh, I the especially some of the the previous pictures that girl with the with the makeup triangles on her eyes and her head is tilted back. I love that image. That is so that has a lot of personality, and yeah. it, it really pops as a portrait because she's she's definitely you know she's not totally mugging. It's like she's being herself and her character and the spontaneity of the moment that you captured really 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 comes through. You know, I think this is that you capture in each of these that I think is uh, evident. I'm sorry, say that one more time. There's a joyfulness in all of your street portraits that are, that's, it's, it's a continuum, you know. Everyone, at least everyone you're showing, is happy to be there, happy to be where they are, doing what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, there's no, you know, they're, they're there to, be seen and as as you are capturing these images uh they're they're happy to oblige yeah and i just want to show you one more because i think for me i i, I want to sort of remember him uh this is his name is roddy and this is from the coney allen house series uh or at least someone hey, I know. don't you make me cry did something happen to him yeah, he passed away this year. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. So uh, I've been photographing him in one way or another for at least 10 years uh, as a dancer. And so one of the things about this person is that he, has, he had a selfless love, and he showed it. And, you know, when I would see him for the past few months, he would always tell me, I love you, man. I love you. <sighs> and I'm like, whoa, that blew me away. So rest in peace, Roddy. All right. That's all I got. <laughs> I won't talk about that. Mark. Okay. So I get to follow the memorial. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I mean, at least from there, we're moving to, you know, another type of festive occasion. Starry this photo. Night. <laughs> well, it's actually not a starry night. That is a Christmas tree. That's Christmas tree in, in uh, New Brunswick. Uh, mm -hmm. New Jersey, and like it is cool it's right, in, right in the center of town. And you know, you talk about street portraiture. Well, most of the portraiture that I do is agreed upon, you know, well in advance of the time that we actually take the photo. So I have uh, the luxury of being able to bring lights with me to a location often to to take the photo. And in this case. Uh, this individual is a, is a pageant winner, 
right? Uh, they wanted to have a photograph of themselves in front of that Christmas tree uh, or a way to say Christmas. So, you know, obviously the first thing I did was I covered, you know, the dress, showed the environment. And this is not, you know, mitigating in any way. It's just, the fo just a great photograph with, uh, you know, you know, the light and showing the light behind them. I used a monopod to, to make sure everything was steady. And you go to the next one, the next photo. Whoops, not that one. You got them out of order. You got to go one more. There should be another one. Hello. It should be another triptych. Okay, there should be another set of three. Okay, we may not have it. I have to keep rolling. What was the difference between them? Well, the difference was the other one was very close. And let's see. Let me take a quick peek. Again, you don't have that third, you don't have that third photo. And I can't hear you. You only sent me three. You didn't send me four images. Uh, so you should have a third. You should have a third one that has three together, and they're all at night. Uh, I don't... Mark, I have a diptych, a triptych, and a single. Oh, can I see the diptych then? I'm sorry. Yeah, you gave me a diptych. Can I see the diptych then? I'm sorry. Yeah. The what diptych right, is, The diptych is that one. Okay, hang on. Leave it. Just stay where. It, there you go. That's what. So. No, 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 back to the other one. Okay. There's a little bit of, I'm sorry, what happened was there's a little, little bit of a lag here. Okay. All right. So the second photograph that you see here is a close-up of that original first photograph. Okay. It's not the exact same image. Obviously, I walked a little bit closer to the subject. I walked, uh, I guess, to the right of where I was originally and uh, move the light a little bit. And we made sure that we were able to get a sense of the holidays by allowing the Christmas tree lights to glow through in the, in the background. And we made sure to show her our, uh, her ring. It was very important to the pageant system she was part of. Now, the image on the left was also done at night, but in a different location. That's also on the street. That's a real lamppost you see there. It's a real table. That's not that this stuff wasn't dropped in by Photoshop or anything like that. This is a, an actual image that was taken. We had uh, two lights. There's a light that's uh, uh, being used as a hair light to uh, to skim off the, the the left part of the the frame. Actually, the right, the model's right side. And there's a key light, a, a soft dish, a soft box. And you know that particular uh, photo uh, is a lot like the Edward Hopper. Uh, you know, was it the Nighthawks? You know, the corner. Uh, coffee shop, you know, kind of try to evoke that kind of that kind of feel. But that was also another there's another uh, pageant uh, contestant who who needed photographs, and we did a, a series of them. And this is just one of the settings we we used. We used a uh, sort of a local paper, uh, put that there, and so uh, they had, you know, coffee. There's uh, coffee and pastry and a newspaper, as if. They they were in a little cafe in, in Europe, uh, you know, uh, sort of after the after party party or something like that, or, you know, or, or early evening, whatever time you, you want. And that's really it. But the, the main thing is that my street portraiture, because I don't have a studio, uh, and certainly not one that is, uh, you know, any space I use tends not to be big enough to build any set like that. Uh, uh, I, I try to use the environment. Um, that's one of the things that's really uh, important when you're doing street portraiture from my perspective is that if you're actually in a location, try to use the location. Um, you know, a lot of people try to sort of isolate like I've done on the right side just mm -hmm. to sort of a small frame. But as you can see from that first single image that I showed you, uh, that one, right, you know, there's a lot of environment. We did photographs like that. And they don't have as much impact uh, for the individual model as that uh, close-up did. But certainly for the dress manufacturer, it shows the dress, you know. 
Uh, it really depends on what the message is you're trying to send. In this case, we wanted to make sure we got the dress and got uh, images that the model could use for their portfolio uh, to show themselves as well as how, how close fit. In this case, we wanted to show the individual on the left, and then I just mentioned about the right. And if we go to the, the triptych, the, the triptych, yes, thank you. We have three different models, and these are all done in daylight. Okay? And can you guess out of these three, which two were done with uh, strobe lights? I'm going to say first two. Yeah, I, the middle one. That's about all I can speak to for sure. The other ones, I can't really sure. Okay, the first one and the third one. The 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 key light. Actually, you can tell if you look down the at the bottom of the frame on the third image, you'll see a shadow going from the shoes toward the wall from on yep. the right. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, that's the, the sort of filling in the key light. And you can tell because the trees have uh, cast a dappled shadow that they're actually, uh, the sun was a little bit more to the right, a little bit more on the uh, 90 degree. So did you bounce light into the center one? How did you get, because the light is from behind her, the, man, the sunlight. Okay. Well, let, let me get to that. Oh, uh, sorry. Second one, no, no, no I'll, I'll do that. The second one, uh, the light is the sun, right, from the from from the back, and as you can see, it's it's skipping off of the uh, the the wall, uh, the banisters, the stone banisters of the stairs. They're obviously on a it's a street, right? It's a street in Brooklyn, and they're they're holding a sign. I'm in the eighth grade, right? But that's uh, that's the use of a bounce card, okay. And if you use a carefully placed bounce card, uh, you can actually use that same type of direct sun that you used, Kenneth, uh, as a key light. But since it envelops us and it, it scatters, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and it's so broad, what you can do is you can take a, a reflector card, if it's big enough, and you can let the uh, uh, sun bounce back into uh, the subject. Yeah. I knew I knew this one photographer who always wore white shirts just for that purpose. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. he didn't have a bounce card, he could always get close enough and the light off his shirt would give him a nice fill. Right, but <laughs> pretty much I use I use studio principles for all of my portraiture, whether it's literally on the streets, as you can see in those two, or if it's in the studio or what we're using as a studio. I mean I've used hallways, I've used uh, conference rooms, I and mean, I can go through a myriad of lists, a list, myriad lists of a bathroom. I mean, it doesn't, you know, I, I've used all sorts of spaces indoors, but in all honesty, photographing outdoors, uh, you know, with, with strobe uh, to, to either use as a uh, key light or to fill uh, is, is really, it's really engaging. The first image uh, uh, is just one key light uh, it was the, the entire wall was in shadow and this was just as dusk. So I didn't have enough illumination to get the sharpness that we wanted. So what I had to do is I had to use a, a, a light with a, a diffuser uh, to, to get a nice uh, enveloping light around the figure. And I think, I, I think we were successful in doing that. So well, photo, photojournalistically, it's always a good idea. Bring a flash. Don't be afraid to use a flash outdoors. Right. But but more importantly, I mean, <laughs> you don't see it so much in the figure that's on the left, but certainly the figure in the center and the figure on the right and the, the single image that you saw earlier uh, and the uh, photograph of the, of, the, of the model sitting at the table. Yeah, I try to use that environment. If you, if you have no alternative and you must photograph, on the street, I, I, I always advocate using, you know, the, the street. I mean, quite honestly, we did a lot of street photography when we were at Pratt. We you know, walked around with cameras, and we didn't have the luxury all the time of having people pose for us, but we would use the individuals who were on, on the street pretty much as our models, and as they were going through their day-to-day -day 
activities, uh, and we put them, they were already in their environments. But I, I saw that as exercises uh, for later work where I would have to actually have people in environments. And, and in, that, in that way, uh, I found that very useful um, as a sort of a sketching uh, pad for that kind of, of that work. Good stuff, Mr. Skinner, good stuff. Uh, did he freeze up? Okay. No, um, no, no. Thank you. you got anything, Mr. Nelson? We could wrap it here. Uh, no, no, no. I'm okay. I'm just, I'm trying to think of some things, but um, I, no questions come to mind right now. We can wait, man. We have time. You know. <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll, we'll have to, uh, you're gonna have to put up a slide that says, uh, you know, one moment, please, and we'll have to play the girl. <laughs> yeah. You have to play one of those, uh, like an old uh, yeah. or, or Moon River. Now have to play Moon River. Like, oh my gosh, that would be too funny. We got to work on our post production work. <laughs> um, well, okay, that's gonna wrap it then uh, for three Pratt, Pratt grads having our photo talk for this uh, this episode, portraiture street versus studio and defend it there's nothing wrong with uh doing portraits on the street and remember just keep shooting man find what you like and uh don't be afraid to experiment you know experiment with uh, having a flashlight keep a bounce card you know or wear a white shirt uh wear a different color shirt you'd be surprised how much light bounces off a red shirt and how you can use that as a film so portrait shirt get out there, keep shooting. Yeah, you will be surprised <laughs> for sure um we just want to, you know, uh, you know, encourage photography. It's it's a great medium. I think it's the greatest medium known to man. But I'm biased. Um, that and film, of course. But um, keep shooting, keep shooting, keep wait, wait. shooting. Wait, wait, wait. The red shirt. You got to tell everybody what's going to happen. The shirt will show up in your in your in your film in your photograph. It could, if you look carefully enough into the person's eyes, you it might, or it might just give you a nice, you know, red cast. When the you red know, cast. The viewers will say, "Yeah, where did that red come from?" Gentlemen, guess it. Gentlemen, so we don't want to be surprised. Okay, I'm sorry, Greg. I didn't mean to you're, interrupt. You're, was... you're, you're so inundated with color, you can't think monochromatically. Oh on. gosh! Come on. Well, even mon, even black even, and white. Even in black and white, if you, if you wear a white shirt. Color. No, right. <laughs> No, wear the red shirt, put a red gel over the <laughs> over the lens, and you 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 okay. You'll have an interesting photograph. Yeah, okay. it'll it, you, it'll no, it'll change With change the contrast value. It'll be really dramatic. <laughs> yep, 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 definitely, Mister Mister uh, E V over there. I understand completely. A well, white shirt or yellow shirt, you'll get a different uh, different yes, tonality sir. in the black and white. So experiment get out there learn your camera learn light have fun with it and uh if you enjoyed the conversation leave a comment don't forget to subscribe ring the bell so you can you know, find out when we're going to put another episode on this is mr nelson this is mr skinner i'm greg claycorn and we are doing photo talk three black grads. we are out see you next time